Hello everyone, welcome back to the CYPT channel. This time I'll be continuing to demonstrate IYPT 2020 Problem 12 Polygon Vortex. This is part 2 of the series. In the previous video, I explored the possibility of using magnetism to transmit power into the glass container. I modified a magnetic stirrer to test out this concept. Although the prototype worked well, it is limited by the power of the motor and the strength of the magnets. It is unable to spin the water enough to show the phenomenon. This time I built a setup that is much more powerful, and let's take a look. The new setup looks like this. It has a support structure consisting of 4 3 8 inch carriage bolts and 2 pieces of square plastic sheets, each measuring 20 by 20 centimeters. I apologize for mixing metric and imperial units. In Canada, most of the hardware we buy are in imperial units, but I tend to design my experimental setup using metric units. The bottom sheet is what I call the motor plate. It has holes drilled to accept a motor. The top sheet is what will support the glass container. The two sheets are held together by carriage bolts and locking nuts. It is necessary to use locking nuts because a regular nut will be loosened by the vibrations. The motor is a 12 volt 30 watt brush DC motor. It is built in metric and is mounted to the motor plate with M4 locking nuts. Mounted to the shaft of the motor is a plastic disc with M8 locking nuts. Eight disc shaped neodymium magnets are taped to the disc. All the magnets are oriented with the magnetic south pole pointing up. In addition to the bottom disc, there is another disc that will drive the water. This plate also has 8 neodymium magnets with the magnetic south poles pointing up. The magnets are painted in a layer of nail polish to protect it against corrosion. The plate also has a round head screw at the center to decrease the friction of rotation. Although the setup is much more powerful than the prototype, it still has some limitations. The rotating plate cannot be accelerated too quickly. A fast acceleration could make the magnets decouple. But since the magnets all have the same orientation, the plate will not levitate, unfortunately. Another defect is that the glass container has a slanted base. This has proven to not be a major issue, but it could be improved. When we speed up the plate, the water surface will be deformed. The water at the center is pushed to the side, leaving an empty well. This well becomes lower and lower until it touches the rotating plate. To see this clearly, let's add some food coloring. The polygons will only occur when the section of the rotating plate is dry, or in other words, when the well reaches the bottom. Since the water is rotating, it might be tempting to assume that the well is a parabola. But it's actually not. The side view of the water surface looks more like this. We can plot the water height against radius. When the bottom plate is not rotating, the water is level with height of HI. Here, capital R denotes the radius of the container. As the plate angular velocity increases, the water will change so that the well gets deeper. We can zoom into a section of the water surface. Let's consider two of the forces that the element of water feels. One is the gravitational force which points straight down. Another is the fictitious centrifugal force. Note that we're in a non-inertial rotating reference frame. The combination of these two forces act sort of like a slanted gravity. The water surface will try to level itself with the slanted gravity, and this causes the local surface to be perpendicular to the force vector. Knowing this, we can write down our equations. The slope of the water profile is dh dr. This is equal to the centrifugal force divided by the gravitational force. Since we are considering the same element of water, mass cancels out. So the slope is also equal to the centrifugal acceleration divided by the gravitational acceleration. And this is equal to v squared over rg. Here v is the speed of the element of water. 
The reason that the surface profile is not parabolic is due to the fact that the container itself is not rotating. When a viscous fluid flows past a wall, the fluid layer that touches the wall has to have the same velocity as the wall. This is because the fluid sticks to the wall. This is called the no-slip condition. As we go further from the wall, the fluid velocity approaches the velocity of the bulk fluid. In our case, we have a container with a rotating base. The center of the well has speed of zero. The water that touches the container also has a speed of zero because of the no-slip condition. The water that touches the plate will match its speed, which is omega r. This holds at least in the region close to the center. From this information, we know that at the center and at the edge, the speed of the water must be zero. Therefore, the slope of the surface profile is also zero. This is how we know that the surface profile is not a parabola. However, near the center of the container, a parabola is a good approximation for the water surface profile. Once the dry region is formed, we can observe the polygon. At first, we see an ellipse. Then, as the angular velocity increases, we see a three-corner star. From now on, I'll just call this a triangle. Then a square, then a pentagon, and then a hexagon. Polygons with more corners should be possible, but ones that are more than six corners is difficult to count by eye. An interesting finding is that the plate and the polygon do not rotate at the same speed. It seems like there is some ratio between the two speeds. Two of the most important parameters that you can change are the initial height of the water and the angular velocity of the plate. You can of course use different containers with different diameters, but here I only have this 15 centimeter one. The initial water height and the angular velocity of the plate together form a two-dimensional parameter space. We probe different points in this parameter space, and we'll see what type of polygons we get. As the amount of water increases, we will need a higher angular velocity to achieve each polygon. This makes sense, because with more water, we need to spin it faster for the dry region to form so the angular velocity needed for the subsequent polygon will be shifted up. To sketch out the boundaries of the transition, I fill the container to different levels and gradually increase the speed of the plate. This is the graph that I obtained. Here, the different markers represent different polygon shapes. The horizontal axis is the water height, and the vertical axis is the frequency of rotation. You can see that there are distinct transition lines between the different polygons. The triangle is the most common polygon. It exists in a wide region of the parameter space. The subsequent polygons are harder to get. This trend matches remarkably well with what we see in literature. To better illustrate the coverage of the parameter space, we could plot out both regions. It seems like in my setup, the frequency needed to be a lot higher in order to see the polygons. I'm not entirely sure why this is. Perhaps the way that the authors define a polygon is not exactly the same as how I defined it. If you have any thoughts or ideas, please let me know in the comments down below. I hope you liked this video. I'll put a few more clips of the polygon vortex. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.